Okay, well here we are, and um, we are going to clean a gong. Um, there's been other videos explaining how to clean gongs, but one thing I've noticed about them is that um, there hasn't been a before and after demonstration about the impact of cleaning a... Well, this gong here, we've got a 32-inch pasty symphonic gong, and it is actually a bit mucky. Um, I'm not sure whether you can see, but it's... Um, well, it's pretty marked all round here, can, around here where it's been played. I'm not quite sure why. It's not actually our gong. We've um, got it on loan, but um, before we play it and take it um, on our travels, we're going to um, give it a good clean. So let's actually hear what it sounds like. I'm not sure we're going to spot the difference, but let's have a go anyway. See what it sounds like now, before. Sorry about that, but um, well, it's a lovely gong. I'm not too familiar with this gong, but um, it does sound a little bit dull, um, and it's certainly very dirty. So it's going to, at the minimum, we're going to make it look really bright and shiny and beautiful. But hopefully, it will sound more beautiful as well. Uh, there we are. Um, we're going to now remove this gong from its stand. Um, because the most practical way of cleaning these, in, these uh, big, bigger gongs is to put them horizontal. And if you have something like this seat that we have, it's absolutely ideal for cleaning this on. You could put it on the floor on a mat or on some old newspaper because it uh, potentially can make a bit of a mess. But we've got this great uh, little seat that's absolutely ideal. Right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get a bit of water, just a tiny bit, we don't need a great deal. And then we have this cleaning material, it's called, and this isn't an advert, um, but this stuff does really work very well, it's called Goddard's Long Term Silver Polish. It also, this is a liquid form, it does also come in... Um, um, in a solid form with a, with a sponge pad, um, it's still called long-term silver. I think it's called long-term silver pads. But the key thing is Goddard's long-term silver polish. And the thing about this stuff is that it's water-based and it's ideal for bombs. I'm going to take my watch off, actually, because I don't want to get that in the way. So this gong is fairly dirty. So if it wasn't quite so mucky... I could apply um, a little bit of this solution straight onto, our, um, onto a dampened um, cloth. But in this case, because it's pretty mucky, I'm actually going to give it a bit of a shake um, and then apply it directly onto the face of the gong. So pretty liberally over the gong. I might even put some more than that on. I'm not going to put too much on to start with, but let's see how we get on there. Can you see that? That's a fair, that's a fair old whack of that stuff. So, um, um, as I said, just a very um, damp rather than wet um, cloth. I'm just going to dampen a corner. And as I say, damp rather than wet. Here we are, so this corner is now damp. And I'm going to get it um, uh, in my forefingers, a couple of forefingers, and I'm just going to rub this uh, solution in, in circular motions. Actually, this is already 
too damp, too wet. In circular motions around, to start with over this main, shiny main flying area of the gong. You can, I'm not sure whether you can see, but we can already see some of the muck come off it. It's quite grubby, and then we'll go into the center. And then on the outside, well, I'll probably now, look at that. Already, we're getting quite a lot of muck off this. Um, what I'll do now on the, because I don't think the, the outer darker rim of the gong is quite so mucky. I can't see, but I think it's, it's not a playing area, so it's not attracted so much muck. So that time I applied a little bit just to the cloth and I'm going to go right onto the outer rim as well. So I'm just putting a little bit at a time now to the outer rim as well. Now, that's the first go. Now this is pretty grubby, this gong, so I'm not quite sure. The, what I'm going to do now is I might, I might give it another go, um, apply another load of the cleaner, but at the moment what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a couple of minutes to dry. It's much easier to clean off the um, dried liquid than leave it when it's still um, uh, not solidified. So it takes a couple of minutes to dry, um, so we will come back to it just then. Just about dry now. We're going to test it out by just doing a single, yeah, look, I've just done a single thing and we can see that is pretty good. Okay, here we go. This time, instead of circular motions, I'm going, to, I'm going to follow the striations of the pattern on the surface of the gong like this, a straight up and down this. So this rag is now pretty much had it. Look how dirty, how much muck we've got off it. Um, and we're gonna now use a completely clean, dry, new cloth to finish it off. I mean, careful to get into all the nooks and crannies on the outside, which is a bit mottled the edge, because that, um, can hide little elements of the cleaner, but it's coming up nicely now. It's really shiny now. Okay, so we've worked that over pretty hard now, um, and it's coming up a treat. Um, it really does look nice and shiny and beautiful. Um, one final finishing touch. We've got this really nice, soft duster type glove duster thing, and this is ideal for giving it a final polish. This time I'm just going to do a, a bit of a circular motion. One lovely shiny gong back on the stand and let's see how it sounds.
For me, noticeably brighter. I don't know if you could pick that up. Noticeably shinier and noticeably brighter. Thanks very much for watching. See you next time.